I was I was having a look through it all, and um, time after time it says, and and this is, I think would be interesting for the for the students who will be end up watching this, you know, courted by Disney. There's some talk of Superman in there that you know that someone was actually playing Superman. All this stuff, but you you chose to stay here, and and which is very cool. But it's not exactly uh, what ninety percent of the actors in this country do, and it's not exactly w- w- with most people would have bolted at the kind of offers that you were getting. Like you know, <laughs> see you at the border, I'm gone. Yeah. You know, and and yet you didn't. No, and I, but I don't. You know, it's not entirely a kind of altruistic nationalist right. gesture I mean it, <clears throat> I, wa- I, ha- I was actually down in Los Angeles and I was I'd been there for about a month or something and I did a got a lead role in a Disney picture and I actually hated it it yeah. wasn't I didn't like the process of it right uh, and I didn't like living in Los Angeles I didn't like the feeling of the business there because right. it actually really is a business I mean I would, yeah. no, no actors would ever talk about the role they were playing and the nature of the story it was all about what was the size of their trailer and yeah, what were they getting yeah. paid? You know, I, and I found that really not only foreign, maybe it would have been better if I'd gone there when I was 18, but right. I, I was older and I, I thought it foreign, I felt it foreign and uncomfortable. And then I think maybe somewhere underneath it all, I was sort of looking around for an excuse to leave right. and Do South came along. So right. I came back to do this television pilot, which I thought would just be a pilot. And then I thought, well, then I'll have to go, probably go back down. But for whatever reason, it just started running, and then right. it kept going. And then that took up a long chunk of my time. But then I got, as a consequence, in a position where I could sort of do things that interested me. Right. And that did allow me to stay. So when the U.S. offers were coming in, I oftentimes would be kind of onto something else. But it doesn't stop. You know, and there are, there are times here. I mean, the business that we live in here is, is so... Uh, just kind of permanently precarious and chaotic and it, it, it there isn't any sense of it i've never experienced any sense at least in the long time that i've been working in it that it's ever going to solidify into something that's yeah you know dependable yeah. uh so that and there are lots of frustrations in it so when when i do get and recently i had an offer from imagine uh doing a fox pilot and, to, and an absolutely terrific show and these guys are fantastic producers they are the guys who kind of did friday night lights and right rest of development and there was also imagine's film side was yeah kind of, brian grazer they, yeah. they were all part part of this sort of package thing and it, <laughs> it was funny the guy was funny the guy who heads up imagine is a terrific guy named david nevins and we were on the phone i was actually getting on a plane in calgary and he said i, I don't know what to, i know your agent says money doesn't matter that much to you but i feel i gotta tell you we're gonna give you a Oh no, money doesn't. You don't care all that much about money, but we're going to give you a whole lot not to care about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to think. Yeah, I know you guys spend a lot of money, uh, but in the end of the day, the, there are certain things that I'd really like to do, right? And and nothing has actually compelled me to want to leave, right? Um, that isn't to say that it wouldn't happen if something really magnificent came along. Uh, I, I might go, right? I'm not sure how long they're going to remain interested if I keep telling them no. <laughs> exactly. You never know. I think you're teasing them, right? I think, yeah, I think at one yeah. point they're going to say, don't ever even ask this guy. I'll never say yes. <laughs> uh, but, you know, an awful lot of what's made in, in television anywhere, U.S. and here, is just not very good. Yeah. Or it might be good, but it's not something you can see yourself doing for seven, six or seven years. And I right. think for anyone kind of contemplating this career, the TV... Uh, television is brutal, uh, particularly if you're the main lead of a series. It is... It's all exciting and fun at first, and you get lots of money, and uh, and you suddenly kind of your face is everywhere. Right. Uh, but it, it's not you don't have any life, and when you sign on to these series now in the states, you sign on for seven years. Yeah. So you have to look at something not from the standpoint of oh this would be great because it will lead to, uh, really you have to think can I do this part for seven years? Right. And I played Hamlet and. As much as I loved it, I, I don't think I'd want to do it for seven years. So it's going to it's going to have to be an awfully good part. <laughs> but I have been looking at, at other models, you know, doing sort of a thirteen show. Yeah, sort or, of the British model of doing. Yeah, or an HBO where you do yeah, sort yeah. Of a, a limited season to allow enough time to actually pursue other things. Right. But I, you know, I do think that that you know my attitude about Canada is probably slightly different than others who just grew because I grew up outside a lot we moved around yeah yeah absolutely I mean you grew up all over the world which yeah. is where I was going to get to the nationalistic thing but we've 
we've covered that already because you didn't really grow up here, born here, yeah. moved everywhere, and then came back to go to university in Alberta. Well, and I think that's one of the things that if you, I don't know, I've said this before, but it kind of bears repeating if anyone was ever completely stupid enough to make me prime minister for even two weeks. <laughs> The first thing I would do is send everyone who's not been out of the country out of the country. Right. Send them somewhere so that you can look back at the place with some, some perspective. Because it uh, it's an astonishing country. Yeah. And it is worth contributing to. And it always strikes me as being terribly sad that we have great people come up through the, the nation's systems of training and, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and their initial kind of work uh, creatively. And then they're gone. Yeah. And we never get them back. And part of it, I think, is that our industry is just not robust enough and that it has, in many ways, while we're very good at a thing, we're not good at all of the things. And we ought to be productive on all levels. It is absurd to me that Jim Carrey and Mike Myers and Dan Aykroyd and on and on and on aren't here. Right. Or that they don't come back. You know, when you look at the UK, they all return. Look at Australia, they all go back. What is it? Why do we not have them here? And principally, it's because we don't have anything to offer them. Right. We don't make movies for... Mike Myers. Right. And we should be. Someone should be coming up with a Mike Myers movie, and Mike might say, yeah, I'd like to do that, and he yeah. comes back for the summer. And I think that we need to kind of get our heads around, away from only doing O-Tour festival-driven pictures, and to do, I mean, we do, to a certain extent, that's already happening, but it, it's a lamentable problem, it seems to me, that we lose people and, and they never return. And then... And part of that is that the government can only finance so much. I think one of the things we have to start to encourage is for the private sector to return to the Mm -hmm. business. I mean, they've got all the money. And and that's the first reason. There's a lot of money out there. And then the the other reason is that I think it's good for the country. And this sort of goes, in a way, to the... Uh, I'm not sure how interesting it is, but I'll go through it anyway. It goes to the problem of how our, our industry actually functions here. It is almost entirely governmentally driven. And I think that has, it's got a couple of problems with it. One is that <clears throat> the bottom line is very odd. It's hard to find where it is, by what is the rubric by which we judge the success of something. Right. Uh, because if you don't have to make money, which our films don't, then it, it can be whatever anybody decides. Oh, it played at Houston, therefore it's successful. Right. And I think we have to be careful of that. Yeah, but I think one of the big problems is how it relates to the citizenry. I mean, nowhere is this more explicitly evident than with the public broadcaster and the attitudes towards CBC. And there's an enormous amount of national resentment and also national love, but there's a lot of resentment towards it. And I think this also applies, to all, you know, can apply to everything in the arts where the government, where the, the citizenry start to feel as though this is something that's forced upon them. Their money is taken from them and they're forced to be involved in this. Uh, and we don't we don't want them to come to the point that they resent us and that they think we're just part of a complicated welfare scheme. <laughs> I mean, we do want them engaged in their own stuff. And right. we are engaged in the unfolding story of the country, and they ought to be engaged in it as well. And I think we need to... My experience with Passchendaele was really eye-opening. There's a lot of interest there, and I think we need to bring that interest back into the business. 